Well, one of the things I was waiting for from UPS, which funny did show up, uh, they delivered it to a neighbor that just moved into the area and didn't know anybody. Those happened to know my sister-in-law. So their name was the same, so it ended up getting here. One of the things I was waiting for was this thing. Though I could have got by without it. Uh, the other thing was this saw. Now, this, I can safely say it was a mistake. At least it wasn't a real expensive mistake, but it was a mistake. You know, in order to do that trunk, I have to be able to cut dovetails to do the corners. Now, I don't do a lot of dovetail cutting. So I figured, okay, I want to practice in scraps of this basswood before I go at it. And it's not that complicated, but it does take a little bit of attention because in the doing of this, I've probably made about every mistake you can make. But I'm getting there. And I'll probably uh, make a, quite a few more practice pieces before I start on a large piece, you know, because you don't want to screw up a big piece of wood. So I'll use some scraps and make some like little ammo boxes and stuff first to get the knack down here. Uh, this is a handy little deal that, uh, for laying the pieces out. But then, you know, after you get them all marked and laid out, you got to cut them. And like I say, this saw was a bit of a mistake because it's a new one, but it's merely looks like a saw. <laughs> and the funny part is, well, even just looking eyeball and downer, I can see it's got a curve to it. You know, and the idea on these is they got a brass back that's supposed to keep them straight. So that's no good to have a curve. Then running my fingers over it, I can feel the, the teeth are offset on this side. There's no set on this side. She's, she's smooth. You know, so it tends to want to cut at an angle, which is hopeless. You know, I think I have a saw set someplace that I could maybe bring it back out of that. But for a new saw, that's just poorly made. I ended up cutting them with this old pole saw. These cut straight. You know, this, this thinner one would actually been better, cuts less at a time, but that's got too much flex to the blade. Now, if this had a brass back like that does, but but I've got a an old saw ordered, and I'm hoping that perhaps an old one will be better made than this new one, because this is no good, useless. But I did get them marked, and I did get them cut. And one thing I have to say, this basswood is very forgiving. But you can see here where I started to cut with that, this other saw, and she made a, a twist on me. That screwed that corner up. But this is working. This is, is going to work. But like I say, I'll do some more before I chance with a big piece. And I don't have to be real precise. You know, these are supposed to be a functional joint. I'm not doing this for a uh, looks kind of thing. In fact, most of these trunks, in the end, had metal covering the corners just to protect them so you don't chip out the dovetails. So I'll probably do that anyway. But it's a strong joint. Now, you can take time and make really elaborate you know, really perfect joints. Uh, well, or you can do it with a router to make really perfect joints. Uh, that doesn't impress me as much as one time, this was before I was ever watching YouTube videos, uh, so I don't know where I saw this, but there was a guy who worked for an instrument company. And he made the shipping crates. They made, like... Uh, scientific instruments like compasses and all this stuff microscopes everything that they made he made the boxes to ship the stuff out so he had his little shop in the basement this is over in Europe someplace Denmark or something and I 
was watching on this video where he had just piles of, of rough wood. He'd look at his instrument and he'd just take out regular little hand tools and he'd be hacking away and there was no uniformity but it was he would hammer out a very functional box to ship this thing in in just minutes. I, w I was just amazed how fast. But this is something he'd done all his life and his dad had done it before him. You know, so it's just a matter of practice. But perfection, I'm not striving for. I, I, you know, I'm always striving for function. And even this joint, as poorly as that is, would function for what I needed to function. The reason, this is both the same wood. The reason, this is that sample I was monkeying around with that pine tar and oak on, which is what it will be in the end. But I'm going to play around and make some more little sample, little test pieces, but uh, good enough that I'll, like I say, I'll make some ammo box and stuff that'll serve its purpose. But it's interesting, strong joint. You know, and like I say, basswood particularly nice in that basswood is forgiving. You know, it isn't as splintery as, as some woods are. You can hammer on it, she's got a little give to her. But that's where I'm at. But this is always a particularly disappointing thing. I don't know, new tools just seem to be that way. You know, always disappointing. Old tools always work. <laughs>